Okay, so actually, these supernatural weapons were one of the first prints I did on the Phenom L, which I absolutely love. Look at all the things on that bed. So all those uh, weapons from Supernatural have videos on in the coming weeks, and of course, you can get them over at the site 3dprintedprops.com. There's a coupon code in the description below to get 20% off. So this is how I clean my prints. Now there's another video you can take a look at where I, I showed a little bit slower, but what I'm doing is I'm spraying uh, alcohol on these prints and then wiping them down and sort of doing it once or twice or two or three times actually. And you need to do this with bigger prints. Like how do you clean something like this that's so huge? You can't put a little pickle container. You've got to have all this area. Now I did make a mistake and I cut the teeth off, the top two teeth a little bit. So we'll fix that later. Now I am going to do a little bit of sanding. A lot of times people think resin prints, you don't have to sand. Well, there are some layer lines sometimes and you do need to take care of them. Okay, now I use epoxy sculpt. I love this stuff. When I make little mistakes like this and I need to add on to a model or sort of take out the lines of a model. Let's say you're putting a figure together and you don't want the lines and the arms. And you can just sculpt the stuff, let it sit for 24 hours and it hardens right up. It's totally sandable, totally paintable. And again, I use this stuff all the time with mistakes. And again, by the time you're done with it and you're smoothing it out, you don't even know that it was added on. And there you go. As you can see, you'd be hard pressed to know that I added something there. It looks a little rough, but once I sand it down, you won't even be able to tell. Now we'll take a look at a reference. I always use a reference. And I start with a, a sort of an ivory paint that I love that I need to get more of. You can see it's gone. And this is just cheap acrylics. If you want to know what I use, it's in the description below. Um, I don't buy anything fancy when I'm painting models like this or, or props like this. Uh, cheap acrylic paint works perfectly and it is cheap. So I'm going to give this all a base coat. Now the thing I love about painting a model like this that's so distressed is um, you, you're building up layers. So don't think you're just going to bang this out in one sort of print, uh, you know, one sort of paint and just get this effect. You really need to work at it to sort of build up these layers and don't get discouraged because there were a few times in this where I was like, oh, I'm just not getting it because you might be looking at this sort of burnt umber and saying, I don't see this color at all in the model. But you have to start thinking like, let's see, this thing is an ancient bone. It's gone over all this time. Where does the wear show? You know, even if you're not going, you know, faithfully off of um, a reference, like that's just a, something I found someone did that looked really good. I liked the paint job and I sort of wanted to do something like that. But you're going to build up your shades. So I started out with a lighter shade and then I sort of went to a darker shade in the middle. And again, the middle is going to be darker because of course uh, it's sort of concave and it's going to hold the dirt, just like all the cracks and stuff are going to hold the dirt. So I'm making sure to go back over the teeth like this with a darker color because you know, there would be gunk and grime in there over the ages. Again, this thing is like a thousand years old. And now I just, I'm looking at it and it's a little too light still. So this is almost like a wash. So it's a lot of water and a little bit of paint. So this way it isn't totally painting over it. You can still see that ivory through, but you know, it's a wash. Again, I didn't think it was dark enough. So I went ahead and I'm adding more and more. And you can see how it shows the texture in those teeth. And again, I'm looking at this at first and I'm like, geez, I don't know if I'm happy with this. Just keep painting and you will start to see what you're looking for emerge. Um, you can get really discouraged when you're trying to build up something like this. Just have fun with it and work on building up those layers. So again, cracks and crevices, they're going to hold the most dirt. So I'm going to make sure that these little dots and these little grooves that are painted in or carved in, uh, they are going to get a lot of wear and a lot of black in there. Now, if you're not happy with how much pigment you put down, get out a cloth like I've got right there and I'm just wiping it down. And again, I'm looking at the shape of the weapon itself to see where everything's going to show up, like where would, you know, uh, grime show up, but at the same time also where would highlights show up, where would whites show up. And again, I just gave that another wash of a lot of water with a little bit of paint to, you know, sort of orangey yellow it up a little bit. And again, you just wipe some stuff off here and there. And I noticed it's looking a little too yellow. So now I'm just sort of using the cloth and wiping away paint. So sometimes you're going to add paint. Sometimes you're going to wipe it away. Uh, don't wipe too much away or you never, you know, <laughs> you're never going to finish. 
But on those highlight areas, I've got a clean cloth now and I'm just wiping that away. And then I think I did go a little too far with wiping it away and I'm gonna go back and add some a little bit later. So this is starting to turn out like I like it. Uh, a lot of it has to do with just the amazing detail on this model as well. All these cracks and crevices, they really hold the paint and really make it look like it's something. So there you go. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now I'm sort of just dabbing colors because I want textures. And that's what something like this is about. Now, if I just sort of used a, uh, you know, the cloth and was wiping up and down, I'm going to get streaks. But if I dab it, like I crumble it up and I dab that cloth with a pigment, I'm going to get sort of like... Um, more modeled splotches and that's kind of what you want again you're building up a texture and again since there's such deep crevices in here it really holds that really well and it, the, the texture really really comes out uh, again really super happy with how this model turned out this is of course uh, the first blade from supernatural it was the weapon kane used to to kill his brother abel in the in the television show and what dean ended up using um and when he had the mark of kane so there it is one side done really happy with it still going to use a little bit of work now we got to do the other side but i won't film that because we already saw I did this side i just did it on the other now uh for the black straps and uh you know i decided to go ahead and let the uh the bone color just go over that it was no big deal why i try to get it close when uh you know i'm just going to paint over it anyway the black handle the leather handle really uh turned out well with this black paint i was really really happy with how this was turning out uh, i like the texture of the paint yeah i wouldn't want to spray paint something like this texture again is really really key when you're trying to get that aged and sort of distressed look now again this is what something i talked about earlier when you're building up color building up color sometimes you need to look at the model and see where would it wear now like here's the teeth i wanted some of those to be a little shinier because those might be something that that would wear on uh on the thing you're killing or it would wear in the case it was in and it would also make them look a little bit more teeth like so i'm just wetting the cloth and then i'm wiping it away and that's a lot easier to get that look by actually doing what it would happen, the wearing, the wiping, to just try to paint more lighter color on there, it wouldn't look as natural as it does when you just use a wet cloth to take that stuff down. And uh, again, I'm just gonna do that over some of the other areas. And you know, this is probably one of the neatest paint jobs I've done. I've been, uh, I don't mean neat as in tidy, uh, I mean neat as the old, in the old fashioned way people would say, that's neat. But <laughs> I just really love uh, this paint job. I'll, have to, I'll say it myself. I'll, uh, I really dig it. And again, I'm just wearing away, away at more of the paint and taking it down so it looks a little bit more natural on the wear lines. Like if you had that in a, in a pouch or something like that, the highlights would be lighter. So I went ahead and modeled the case and I'm just giving a little bit of a sanding uh, where there were some supports and where I had some resin run where I didn't sort of clean it well enough put some glue on it, drop that down on there, and you can see how it's sort of sinking a little bit because this is all hollow. You don't ever want to paint something like that as a solid piece of resin. And I'm just going to go ahead and give it a matte black paint job and then uh, go ahead and do some gilding, some gold. Now, this is really a gold um, rub and buff with a little bit of, um, what's that called, airbrush uh, thinner. To make it runny a little bit runnier so i can paint with it because the reference that i saw from the show had that sort of gilt sort of look to it and i thought this would look a lot neater uh and cooler than if i just used gold paint and it did it had this really nice sort of glistening look really really happy with all of this and how it came out